Welcome everybody. Hope you're having a good day and you're all well. Uh, this is your screencast for Physics 11 to complement your work in your study guide on the introduction to forces or the topic known as dynamics. So screencast today has two main objectives, so let's take a look at them. Our first objective has to do with the concept of a net force. Um, this is uh, an aspect of one of Newton's three laws of motion, an um, aspect of his first law, actually. Um, we're going to address Newton's laws in much more detail in upcoming screencasts, but this is a bit of an introduction to his first law. Um, the net force is something we can use to find out about how an object will behave. Will it speed up, slow down, stay where it is? Uh, and because we're using forces, it's important to remember that forces are vectors. So the direction that a force is acting uh, makes a very big difference in the outcome. Um, free body diagrams, the second objective for our screencast today. Um, they're pictures or diagrams that an engineer or a physicist would use uh, to try to interpret what's going on in a situation. Um, can help us brainstorm what forces might be involved. Uh, maybe there's one we hadn't thought of before and the diagram helps us realize it must be there. Um, and they inform our intuition. There is another aspect of the screencast coming up. It's the one following this. It's a little bit more academic, focused on applying this in physics, how we can use a free body diagram of the concept of the net force to calculate and find the size of something that is unknown uh, and use that to predict or explain how something is, uh, is moving or behaving. So let's begin. A good start is the definition. Um, so the net force uh, represents the sum of all forces acting on an object, or you can consider um, a group of objects together as, as one system of objects. So you simply add all those forces together. But remember, the forces are vectors, so to find the net force we have to add vectors together. So let's just quickly go back to what we did in studying motion in kinematics. If we're going to add two motions together, when I add the vectors, I have to draw the vectors tip to tail. So here, PQ and QR tip to tail. From where I started to where I finished, that would be the resultant vector. This vector diagram is represented by a vector equation. That often informs what we're going to do. So we take the vector PQ, we would add the vector QR, and that is equal to the vector PR. Again, that vector equation can only be solved using the vector diagram drawing the vectors tip to tail. So let's remember that as we explore into forces. Um, the net force is one aspect of Newton's first law. Again, we'll come to this in more detail in some upcoming screencasts. Um, but the first law is really intuitive. We have some experience of it just living in the world for the number of years we have. Um, when we see an object at rest, it should stay at rest. And if it begins to move, our intuition informs us to hunt. There must have been something making it move. This leads to comedy, so cartoons that kids laugh at, often because of surprises that they didn't expect. Such as Gravity Stopped, well, and then the other side. I love these cartoons. Objects falling at different rates, counterintuitive, and that's what makes us laugh when we see a surprise. enjoyed those as a kid. Um, but the comedy for uh, you know a young child comes from some violation of Newton's laws. There's a surprise happening there that we didn't expect. Um, when objects are at rest, they should remain at rest. And in terms of the net force, that means all of the forces acting on the object should add up to zero. Uh, based on our experience, if something is accelerating, we do see it move, um, then there must be some forces in the direction that it accelerates. So that's something we're going to use to break down these free body diagrams. Thailand's Sukanya Srisarat loaded up the bar with an Olympic record 110 kilos. Wow, 110 kilos. So she obviously accelerated the weights. So there must be forces involved. So if we look a little more closely, our intuition, we know she's pushing and pulling with her arms. There's a force upwards. And they must be in counteraction to the force of gravity pulling the weights down. We're going to look at this in much more detail. But our intuition, we know she would pull. And we know there's a weight pulling down. So count on that as we continue with our physics. 
if an object accelerates, that's when the net force is greater in one particular direction than another. Um, so the net force is not going to be zero. Uh, here's three demonstrations that sort of illustrate. You could do these demos at home. They're not, uh, they're not hard to do, sort of fun to put together, uh, that illustrate that a net force must be there. A little bit of soap. Oof. Cool, the, the piece of paper accelerated, so clearly the net force was bigger than zero. Um, and based on its motion, we can even infer what direction that force must have been. So maybe we don't know what's causing it just yet, but it's a place we can begin our analysis. Let's look at another demonstration. This one's a fun one just with a spoon and a fork. Push the two of them together like this, and you'll get sort of a triangular shape. Uh, put a toothpick uh, in between the tines of the fork, just sort of jam it in there. Uh, it's a bit tricky to balance at first, but once you find the center of gravity, uh, it ends up in equilibrium. Uh, it's at rest. Light the two ends on fire with a match, and they'll go out just near the glass and near the fork. It's at rest, so the net force must be zero. Now we know the spoon and the fork have some weight, so the force of gravity would be pulling them down. So there must be some other force pushing back up, and that's the force that would be acting right where the matchstick is, or the toothpick. Oh, this is a good one. Isn't that neat? Okay, so what's going on? Is the net force zero here or not? Well, we know there's some weight hanging down there from all of the metal, so there must be a force of gravity pulling that down, and clearly something pulling up on the other side. How do those two forces compare? Is one larger, is one smaller? That's the sort of thing we'll be able to take a look at in more detail as we continue our study of free body diagrams and forces. So, a little bit more advanced situation here. Um, how do we know that air molecules actually exist? We can't see them, but if we look for forces, we can find evidence they're there. Have a listen. Smoke from the straw is injected into a small container. A lid keeps it in place and a bright light enables it to be viewed under a microscope. If you took your um, cell phone and you looked through the, um, uh, through the microscope and looked at the smoke particles, those would be the white dots that you see. Notice they're not stationary. They're moving around in these, well, what looks like random motions, but not very fluid really quite sort of jerky in their motion. What's really going on here? Um, here's a demo a physics teacher did that I thought was pretty good. They use some ping pong balls that uh, are bouncing up and down a loudspeaker and they move the balloon around, sort of in these random jerky motions. That's a really good model if you go back to looking at the smoke particles. Notice they're moving in these sort of random um, jerky motions back and forth. So if we zoom in and look at this in more detail, um, every time there's a sudden change in motion, there must be a force going on. So in the animation that you see, every time there's a change in its motion in any of these smoke particles, we can infer, even though we can't see them, there must be air molecules there. So pretty famous experiment actually in the history of physics called Brownian motion. And it was one of the pieces of evidence we know that um, gas molecules do exist. Cool. All right, so let's take a look at free body diagrams. Specifically, how can we create them accurately? When we're doing our free body diagrams, remember forces are vectors. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Okay, fair enough. So to be thorough, make sure your vectors, you're considering how long each vector should be, that's the magnitude, and what direction you should draw it. And sometimes the direction is counterintuitive, so be careful. Uh, if you can, label the vector with a name that makes sense uh, to describe the type of force that's involved or a symbol. Um, and include a number if you can, if in the question or situation they tell you what the force would be. And remember the units of force are newtons in honor of Sir Isaac. Uh, 
Um, the other thing you can use is if you're thinking about what the net force might be. If you expect the net force to be zero, that will help inform what magnitude or length to draw each vector. It'll also inform your intuition. So you may have a situation, again, where the net force uh, you expect to be zero um, and it's not turning out that way. And that will help your intuition um, and, and maybe hunt and figure out that there's a force you haven't considered yet to add into your free body diagram. We're going to be looking at two examples uh, to illustrate how to make a free body diagram. Uh, we'll go back to the weightlifter video you saw before, uh, and we're going to look at two parts. Uh, one when she's accelerating the weights, and another time when the weights are held in one position, she's holding them at rest. Um, so two separate pieces, and hope these help as an example for you. So first, we're going to focus on this part right here, just where she's accelerating the weights upwards. Uh, and we're going to analyze the forces involved here. So consider just the weights, although the, we've got her arms and her feet and the floor, just consider one object at a time. And we know that it's accelerating upwards, so we know that uh, there must be a net force in the upwards direction on these weights. Okay, uh, now using our intuition, what forces must be there? Well, we're on Earth, there's got to be a force of gravity pulling down on these weights. So we've drawn a vector, the direction is down, um, and remember, to be complete, we should put a symbol on the vector. So there we go, Fg representing the force of gravity. If we knew the size of the weight, um, then we would add the number. In this case, it's 540 newtons based on the information given for the lift. Um, so assume that's given to you in the problem. And there are two weights, so we would have a force of gravity vector downwards, same size, same magnitude on the other weights as well. Now. She's clearly lifting these up, so again, using her intuition, her hands are pulling on the bars, so we would have a force upwards, and you could call that an applied force or a force from her arms, that's fine. And of course, she's got two of them, so there are two applied forces vertically pulling up on the weights, so we have these two applied, applied forces. Okay, now, the net force is upwards, so that means the forces she's pulling upwards must be larger than the forces of gravity that are pulling down. So we know or can infer that those applied forces must be bigger than 540 newtons. Now when we look at this, it's pretty complicated. Um, and to simplify things, rather than looking at all separate pieces of an object, consider it as just one whole piece or one object. So let's start fresh. And I'll just cover up the weights so we just see one object, so pretend it's one solid box. So now we would just have one force of gravity rather than two. So adding those two weights together, we have 1,080 newtons directed downwards. The applied force, I know it would be through two arms, but we'll just consider this as one object this time. So there would be one applied force pulling upwards. And by the same logic, the net force is upwards, so the applied force she's pulling upwards with must be bigger than 1,080 newtons. So there's a simplified free body diagram for the weightlifter. Um, so we have some intuition of what's going on. I hope that helps as an example. Let's try one more. Um, let's take a look at the top. So, So this spot right here, when she's holding the weight, again, let's just consider just the weights, not other parts of the problem, uh, and the weights are held at rest, so we know the net force must be zero. Okay, to make our free body diagram, again, let's choose the simplest approach. Let's treat the weights just as one object, and so we'll have um, just one force of gravity pulling down, and again, that would be 1,080 newtons like we saw before. Um, and then the applied force that she's pushing upwards, again, I know it's with two arms, but we'll treat it just as one object. So there's an applied force upwards. And if the net force is zero, we know these two vectors have to cancel each other out in order for the net force to be zero. So in this case, we know the applied force must be equal to 1,080 newtons. So just a couple of problems there to illustrate how you can use this strategy of a diagram to help inform what you're thinking is going on in a particular problem.